actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm still doing it. And uh, <clears throat> now he's on staff part time. He's helping out with evangelism. And now we've got him doing video, audio stuff that I can't figure out, but that he can. And so we're grateful to have him. So thank you for Tracy. I pray that you would just speak through him today. Stir our hearts to what you want us to hear. Yes. We thank you for his story of freedom. Mm. So just bless him today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, brother. Thanks, Brother Greg. Get situated here. Got to have a little coffee in the morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Isn't it beautiful? Day? You know, it's... It's uh, a trying time right now with everything that's going on. And uh, as I was standing here worshiping this morning, this, isn't, this wasn't part of my sermon. The, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And uh, I want to share something real quick. Uh, but uh, with everything that's going on, people are struggling seriously hard. A lot of people are struggling. They're struggling with freedom. They're struggling with truth. They're struggling with a lot of things. Uh, the churches are struggling. People are, are being told to stay home and being told to stay away and, and, and uh, be careful. A lot of fear. A lot of fear. And I just want to say right now that we need to abide in faith. We need to step out in faith, folks. I'm not saying be, 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 be uh, out of control. I'm not saying be stupid, for lack of better words. But I'm saying, know who you are in Christ. Know who you are. This, this, this virus is a virus. Yeah, it's here and it's probably going to be here for a while. Who knows? The flu has never gone away. And it changes all the time. So, uh, I just want to take a minute to pray for Pastor Greg, Pastor Alicia, and his family for just a quick minute. Because they have been so faithful in stepping out and stepping up and meeting the needs of the people of the church. And it, it touches me because their ability, their strength is coming and drawn down because they're human just like we are. So if you'll join me in just a minute, I just want to pray for them real quick. So Father, in Jesus' name I pray for strength for this church. I pray for strength for the leadership of this church, Father. I, I pray for your truth and your word, Father, to reach out and energize. Restructure our hearts, Father. Keep our minds in you, Father. Keep our union in you, Father. That's where our power comes from. That's where strength comes from, Father God. Father, I pray for a renewing of strength for Pastor Greg and Pastor Alicia, Father, and, and, and their two children, Father. I pray, Lord, that you just give them a double portion of strength, wisdom, and blessing. Father, we thank you so much for that, Lord. And I say, Holy Spirit, come and fill this church. This church is your church. Jesus, you love your church. And Lord, we want to step out in your name with your power and your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So I got to turn my timer on here. So give me just a second. Or I'll just talk and talk and we'll all be like barbecues waiting. So, <laughs> so let, me, uh, let me get started here. Um, so this weekend, um, I do want to talk about freedom. I want to talk about truth. I want to talk a little bit about identity. Um, being the 4th of July, it's... Um, kind of a 4th of July weekend. It fell on the weekend, so it's, it's uh, yeah, a freedom weekend. Let's just call it a freedom weekend. So I got to thinking, um, what, what does the 4th of July mean? What, what, what are we celebrating? You know, what, what does it stand for? And, and uh, of course, it's Independence Day. And I'm thinking Independence Day. So what does Independence Day stand for? What does that mean? Uh, as I was preparing for this sermon, so I did a little digging on it. And I, I thought this, this one little paragraph that I found was just, it just jumped out at me and I want to read it to you. It says, we celebrate the Declaration of Independence for two reasons. 
It represents an official severing of the ties between the original 13 colonies and the rule of Great Britain. But it also represents the core of our beliefs. And get this, church, the very makeup of our identity as citizens of the United States. It's very, that was very um, uh, interesting to me that they used the word identity as citizens of the United States. So basically, it's, it's talking about our, our freedom from the rule of Great Britain. And with that being said, um, I want to talk today about a different type of freedom. I want to talk about um, a lasting freedom. And what his plan is for us, when we follow his plan, it leads us down a path to a freedom in Jesus Christ that's an everlasting freedom. Mm. Amen to that. You know, a lot of people say that freedom isn't free. And I, I agree. I, I think it's, it is, and I think it's not free. But our freedom in Christ is free. That's free. It's free to taking for all of us. All we have to do is ask for it through his son, Jesus Christ, and receive that. But you know what? The part that's not free is that Christ paid a huge price for that freedom. He paid a huge price for it. He freely gave his life to purchase that freedom for us, for me, and for you. Let's take a look at Ephesians verse 1, or correct, Ephesians 1 verse 7. And uh, I think this, this is, I just, this, this verse, I love this verse, uh, and I'm just going to read it to you. It says, verse 7 in Ephesians 1 says, He is so rich in grace, He purchased freedom, the blood of His Son, and forgave us our sins. That's, that's a huge piece of scripture, huge piece of scripture for what we received when Jesus died for us. And in 1 Timothy 2, verse 6, he gave life to purchase freedom for everyone. Doesn't say for a few, doesn't say for, oh, well, maybe, maybe just a here and there. It says for all of us, everyone. So, you know, I want to take just a, a few minutes and, uh, excuse me just a second. I want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about a journey that I went through in my life in finding freedom. And that journey started, oh, I don't know, many years ago, um, probably 12 years ago, somewhere in, that, in that, uh, that time frame. And that freedom that, uh, that I was looking for, because I didn't have, I didn't know what truth was, I didn't know what freedom was, I thought I did. I thought, you know, I was doing what I thought what I should be doing, and I thought was good, and I thought what I needed. But uh, I started down this road trying to find freedom from addiction, from anger, all these things that, that were, were ruling my life, that I was yoked to. And what happened was, is I went through a divorce. I had two children. And some of you may have heard this, this story of mine, but uh, I'm gonna, I, I want to repeat it today because I just think it, it shows how we can find freedom. And I had two children. Um, it was a very difficult time, a very difficult time for my children. Um, I, uh, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of bitterness, um, a lot of uh, blame, a lot of hate that was just overtaking me. So I turned to drinking beer. And I thought, well, if I can just have a few beers, I'll be good. After I have a few beers, I feel good. I don't have to worry about all this, this garbage that's, that's, that's uh, hanging on me. A um, few beers here and a few beers there, boy, I feel pretty good. And I can just be me and I can live of the world and I can do my own thing. And that went on for quite a while. And it got worse. I drank. Um, was single for a while, having my parental visitations with my children, and that was uh, a challenge within itself, trying not to, to be intoxicated when they were around. 
There was just so much going on. And then I met my wife. I met my wife on, on, on the computer system, where I met her on Match.com. Right at the end of my little six-month contract, I had signed with them, or had agreed to them. I uh, wasn't having very much luck with that, uh, trying to date on, meet people online and stuff, and, and uh, the, the things that, uh, that you run into there, a whole nother, whole nother set of weeds we gotta <laughs> go through. But, uh, so I met my wife, um, and we, we started chatting online, and uh, that, uh, that was a blessing. Um, it gave me a little bit of something to, to outreach to and to someone to connect with. And uh, she lived in Aurora. I lived in Hanging City. And how we got connected up, I don't know, because I put my area that down that I wanted. You know, I didn't want to reach out that far and this and that. And, and somehow, somehow, my, my name ended up everywhere. <laughs> I had people writing me from... Japan and China, and it's like, good Lord, this is interesting. And uh, so I get this, this little note from my wife, and I'm like, who is that from? Aurora. Wow. Well, at least it's not China. I might have a little bit of luck there, a little bit maybe. So uh, we started chatting on, on, online and, and reaching out to each other, and uh, Kind of slow, just, you know, didn't exchange phone numbers, didn't do any of that stuff because we, we, didn't, we didn't know each other, you know, and you don't want to hook up with a serial killer or something like that. So you're trying to, you're trying to be careful with all that. And uh, so we're typing back and forth to each other, and that went on for about a month or so, you know, and then after that we decided, well, we'll exchange phone numbers so we could kind of talk to each other so we could hear each other's voice a little bit, and that went pretty good. And, uh, and, and then in, in the process of talking to her, she's like, I don't know how my name got to Canyon City. She goes, I only selected Aurora and Denver area. I said, you know, that's funny you mentioned that. I said, it's because I kind of what I did was this area here, Poe, you know. And I said, and she goes, I'm getting letters from, from all over the world. And people, I said, me too. So it was kind of funny. I, I think that's all a big lie, you know. I, I think they send your name out to everybody. So uh, I don't think that that section that you fill out really works. But anyway, um, we had a lot of fun. We, we, we enjoyed our, our, our conversations and working together um, and talking together. And then I finally got to meet her, um, invited her to my home on Christmas Day. Because um, we met in October, I believe it was. And then she came down in December and we met. Um, spent the day together and had a great time. We just really got to, to sit and talk to know each other a little bit. Um, I had my children that day for it was my Christmas to have them. So she got to meet my children, and we got to, to work through uh, just the breaking of the ice a little bit. So, and this is a long story, so I'm going to kind of jump around and kind of shorten this up for you guys because we don't have all day. So anyway, we worked through that. And uh, so after her, her, her visit, we, we decided, well, you know, um, you live in Aurora, I live in Canyon. This is going to be really difficult to, to see each other, and, and you know, we, got, we can call and talk to each other. And, and uh, she got in her car and headed off. Back to, back to Aurora. And uh, she called me just a few minutes after she left out. She goes, well, I just feel like I just really shouldn't be leaving. I just feel like I really should, you know, hang out with you a little more and stuff. And I said, well, we'll try to figure out how that out, you know, as it goes. And she was driving along and pretty soon, you know, she was kind of sobbing and I was sobbing and, you know, we're like, yeah, no, that's really nice. And, you know, and it's just the companionship of having somebody together. And, and the next thing I know, she's drove past her exit, you know, and she's like, well, I just missed my exit, so now I got to turn around and go back. And, and I, I started laughing. I said, it's kind of funny how things work when you, when you feel good about something. So anyway, that went on for just a little while, and uh, we decided, you know, it's like, well, we need to, we need to decide what are we going to do here. So she, she said, well, she goes, you know what, I'm, I'm willing to leave Aurora. I'm willing to come to, 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 to your home um, because I don't want to, I, I, you know, I'm, I really don't want to be here anymore. I want to try to get out of this big city and, and look at something different. I said, okay, so that's good, you know. So she came down, and we got together, and, and she moved into my home. And we, so, so we, we started off wrong, see. We started off wrong. And we started off doing things that, uh, uh, in our way instead of the way the book tells us to do it. So she moved in with me for a little while, and, and uh, we, we, we stopped, and we started thinking about it. And we're like, you know, we probably shouldn't be doing this. We probably shouldn't be doing this. We probably should get married. If we're going to live together, we need to be married. So we went down and we got a marriage license and we got married. We knew each other four months. And I was thinking to myself, wow, talk about jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Here I go again. 
And it was, uh, it was a journey. It was a journey. That was 12 years ago. So, but in that 12-year period, we had a lot happen to us. A lot had happened to us. And one of those things that happened to us was, was my drinking continued. Um, my ex-wife continued uh, her nonsense. And it caused riff in the family. So a blended family, I don't know, probably somebody in here probably know about blended families. They're, they're difficult. They can be difficult. They can be a blessing at the same time, but they're difficult. And we do our best to try to weed through those weeds and to come out uh, with uh, some type of uh, positiveness and dignity and how we handle things. But anyway, so um, this went on for, for a few years. I kept drinking and, and uh, trying, to, trying to figure out who I was and what my purpose was and all this going on. And, and uh, my, uh, my wife went to the vineyard, the, the big vineyard over on Reynolds. And she came home one day and she goes, you know, I tried that church out over here because we've been talking about getting back to church and we wanted to get back going to church and we wanted to get back into the Lord and we wanted to get back into the Word. And, and, uh, but we were kind of hesitant about it. So she went to the, to the big vineyard. She came home and she goes, you know, that's kind of a nice church. I like that church. So she goes, you ought to come with me. I was like, okay, I'll go over with you. So we started going over there. And uh, the Lord started working on my heart. The Lord started working on me. And I found that... Uh, it was very interesting how powerful um, the enemy is. Because I could go to church and I could love on people and worship and, and connect with the Father and uh, go home and drink a good six-pack when I got home that Sunday afternoon. Just easily. And get drunk. And then wonder what happened. So my wife came to me one day and she goes, you know, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot live this life anymore. And she said, you know, I'm going to have to pack my bags and leave. And I'm like, well, you, do, you, know, you don't really need to do that. You know, we can figure this out. So she packed her bags and left. I came home from work one day and she was gone. And it was, uh, it was a shock, but yet it was a reality. And I knew that... I had to do something to stop this cycle that I was going through. Stop this cycle. So we started talking on the telephone and we reached out to each other and she said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm doing all right, you know, and on and on and on. And I said, I'm trying not to drink, you know, and I've been doing really well. And I'm trying to, to figure out what, you know, what's going on in my life, where, where, my, where my freedom is, where is my truth in my life, you know, where is my, what is my identity in this, in this whole world? And she said, you know, you know, she goes, and, and you need to figure that out because she said, if we're going to have a go at this, I can't, I don't want to live like that. And I said, you know, I don't want you to either. I, I, I get that. So she, uh, she was gone for a few days. And then she called me and we talked, or I know, excuse me, I called her and I talked to her and I said, you know what, I really would like you to come back home. I said, I really miss you. And she goes, well, you know what, let me think about it. And she thought about it and she ended up moving back home. And I did really well. I went, you know, a week made it another week, and I wasn't drinking anything, you know, and everything was going pretty good. We were just trying to, to, to build our life and, and get to, to, to build our marriage a little bit. And we were trying to go to church um, and, and kept searching, kept searching, because I know something was going on in me. I just didn't know what it was. Well, I decided to go back and have a beer one day. I was like, well, I just got through mowing the grass. I'm going to go over to the liquor store, and I'm going to buy me a, a, well, you know, a big beer. Because I was only going to have one. So I went and bought a big beer and come home and I drank that beer and I threw it in the trash. And she's like, oh, you think you should be doing that? And I said, yeah, I'll be all right. It's just one beer. Well, it went to one and then it went to another one. And pretty soon I was buying three or four of those big beers. And next thing I was buying a case of beer and putting it in the truck. And, and, and pretty soon I was right back to, to, to putting on that yoke of, of lies from the enemy. I was back to believing and that's what I was supposed to do. That's who I was. And I continued to drink. And my wife came to me one day and she said, you know what? She goes, you really have to stop this. I cannot do this. So she said, if you don't, I'm going to leave. And I said, okay, I'll quit. And I tried and I tried and I struggled and I struggled and I got down on my knees and I tried and I asked for help and, and then I'd run out and grab a beer. Didn't really, didn't really mean it, I guess, from my heart. I don't know what happened, but I just, I just know that, that, that uh, I wasn't where I needed to be. So she left. 
She came, or her friends came, packed up everything hers in a U-Haul, and they left. And I was just like, you know what? This is my fault. It's because of what I do. It's because of who I am, and I deserve this. And I miss her. And I prayed that night. I said, Father God, if there is something that you can do to help me get this marriage back together, I would sure appreciate it. Because I don't know what I'm doing. And I got home from work that night, and my wife called me. And she said, you know, it's funny. She said, I can't unload a thing off this U-Haul. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, I got to the house. And she goes, and I've tried, and I've tried, and I cannot unload a thing off this truck. She goes, I don't know why. I said, that's weird. She said, and I'd just like to ask you, is it okay if I come back? I said, absolutely. I said, and you know, we'll work through this, and I'm, I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to figure this out. I just need you to give me some time and help me and support me. So she came back the next morning, and we unloaded all that stuff and put it all back in the house, put it all back where it was at, and it felt good. It felt good. And I made it two weeks. Started drinking again. And uh, she came to me and she goes, you know, I was gone. I was out of here. I should have stayed. And I don't know why I couldn't and I don't know why I didn't. She said, but I'm waiting for an answer. And I said, you know, me too. So one night I was sitting in my office and I was thinking how can I control this? How can I do this? I come up with a great idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to get in my beer refrigerator and I'm going to separate my beers out. I'm going to put Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and boom, 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 boom. I'm going to get them all separated in there so I know I can have three beers this day and three beers that day and run on down and that way I don't get intoxicated and we're going to be, we'll be fine. Well, that didn't work because I went into Mondays. I was good on Monday. And Tuesday came, and I drank Tuesdays, and this, boy, it was a hot day. I needed one out of Wednesdays. So I went in and grabbed one out of Wednesdays, and that kind of shorted me for Wednesdays. So then I was going into Thursdays, trying to make up, and pretty soon I was into Fridays, and it was just a mess. I was like, this isn't working. So a few, a few days went by, and, and, and I, um, I, I was sitting in, the, sitting in my office again, drinking a beer, doing some work on the computer. And all of a sudden, I had this weirdest feeling come over the back of me, like wind blew past me. Or like, can you ever have the hair stand up on the back of your neck when something, you know, like you feel like somebody's watching you or something's happening to you and you turn around real quick to see? I kind of had that experience. My heart kind of raced and, and my blood was just like, my whole body was just like tingling. The hair stood up on my arms. And I'm like, what in the world is that? So I prayed. I was like, Father God, I don't know what's going on with this. But if that's you, please take this from me. Please remove this alcohol from me. Take this taste from my mouth. Remove the desires from my heart for this. And all of a sudden, there come that feeling again. Right around me. It's just like somebody just covered me in a, in, in, in a, a virtual tingly blanket full of static electricity, if you will. I, I don't know how to explain it. And I put my head down the desk, and I was like, wow, that's off, odd, and it's awesome at the same time. So I sat there, and I had tears running down my face, and I'm like, well, what do I do? I hear you. And about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 10 minutes later, I'm sitting in my chair, and I feel this tapping on my shoulder. And I'm like, Oh, now I got some contact. I'm going to get to see what this is. So I turn, and there's my 10-year-old son just standing there looking at me. And I'm like, what are you doing, son? He said, Daddy, I got to tell you something. I said, what? What's the matter? He said, I don't know. But I was laying in my bedroom. And he said, and all of a sudden he said, I could, I could feel God and I could feel the Father talking to me. And he told me to come in here and tell you that you're going to stop drinking. And you need to stop drinking. And I looked at him and I said, are you serious? Oh, sorry. Um, and he said, yes. 
I'm serious, Dad. He goes, I don't know where it came from, but he said, I know I was supposed to come tell you. I said, thank you for being obedient, son. And within that time frame, I had confirmation from two experiences setting on my own to an experience of my son coming in and, and confirming all that that just happened to me. And I was just like completely in awe. I didn't know what to do. I was so excited, but yet so freaked out. I was just like spinning. So I went to bed. And in that time frame, I woke up the next morning. I didn't have a headache. I didn't have a hangover. I didn't feel stupid. I didn't feel um, hateful. I didn't feel uh, lost. I felt like I had direction in my life for the first time. And I got up, I went out, and I, I went out into the garage, I opened up my beer refrigerator, and I gathered up all these beers I had, and I took them out, and I dumped them in the, in the trash can in, out, out, out the garage there. And my wife comes out, and she says, what are you doing? I said, throwing this away, I don't need it anymore. She goes, I've heard that before. I said, you wait, you'll see. I've heard that before. I said, you wait. You just hang with me, you'll see. So that was five years ago, and I have not had a beer since then. Amen. Amen. And all, (laughs) thank you. Praise God. Praise God. So, With all that happening, the Lord started on me. You know, and after that, I got serious. I got serious about reading the Bible. I got serious about studying things. And I discovered that uh, the truth to having freedom in Christ is remaining in him. Remain in his teachings. Accept what he's telling you. It's powerful, folks. It's powerful. So let's look at Romans 6, 12 and verse uh, 6, uh, verses 12 and 14 real quick. It, verse 12 says, and this, all these scriptures came as I, as I searched through the Bible and as I searched through all my, my, my Bible notes. This is what came to me through my journey. And it says, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. And in verse 15 it says, Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Folks, that's powerful. And that just absolutely fits my my truth, my story, my faith in Jesus Christ. You know, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 says, For the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. 18. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. That's what happens. That's what happens when you get brave and you say, I believe in Jesus. That's what happens when you, when you stand up and you go, Father, I love you and I want you in my heart and I want you in my life because you are truth. That's what happens. You start being changed into his glorious image and you don't even know it. It just comes on. Let's look at John real quick. John 8. Let's go to John 8. Um, 31. Let's go to John 8, 31. It says, So Jesus said to those who believe in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them. You are my truly my disciples. You are my disciples. That's so true. Amen? 32. I love this verse, folks. This verse is, is my verse, John 8, 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What does that mean? 
Amen. It means what I've just been talking about. That's what it means. It means that the word in this book, if you abide in his word and you come into a union with the, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Father and the Holy Spirit and the Trinity, that he will deliver you. He will protect you. He will walk you through every piece of fire you can possibly come against. Amen? Amen. That's what these verses tell me. That's what they tell me. You know what they tell me? It's not possible. It's not possible to be free or have freedom unless you face the truth. Face the truth. You know what else I think is important to understand? Is that the truth is the truth. It's what it really is. The truth is the way things really are. It's not what we think they are or not the, what we think they should be or not what we wish it was. It's not what it is. If it was, it wouldn't be from us or it wouldn't be from him. It would, it would be from us if, if all that was to, to, to come into to, to play. But it's the reality from God's word is what it is. It's the central theme in his word. Jesus is the word of truth. Let's look at John 1. John 1, 14 and 17. John 1, 14. It says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory and the glory of the one and only Son who came to the Father full of grace and full of truth. John 17. 1, 17. So it says, For the law was given through Moses... Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And in John 16, verse 13, Holy Spirit is truth. He guides us into all truth. So, just a little scripture there to, to, to show you my, my journey. But if you want to have real freedom in Christ... If you want to have, have the freedom that God had, has created us to be and have what Jesus died for us to have, then we have to face the truth. And it starts by facing the truth about ourselves. I know this from personal experience. Because when I started studying the Word and when I got serious about studying the Bible, the Holy Spirit went to work in my heart went to work in my life, and he wrecked me. Over and over again, he wrecked me. But it took time for me to change. It, it didn't happen overnight. It took time for me to start figuring this out and, and connecting with what the, what the word means. You know, in 2 Corinthians 3.18, I don't think I have this one on the screen. This one came to me. It says that as we look into God's word, we are constantly being transformed in his very own image from one degree of glory to another. But each day as I spend time with God and I spend time studying the word, I make progress little by little. I get better at it. Because it's not, uh, oh, let's learn this and I'll stop, I'll stop drinking. I'll stop doing drugs. I'll stop smoking, whatever. It's a lifelong journey, church. It's a lifelong journey. We keep, keep at it. We keep at it. We keep at it. We fall. And the God, God's right there. Jesus comes along and picks us up. The Holy Spirit's right there to pick us up. Our guardian angels are right around us, helping us, picking us up, getting us back on that path again, walking us down that path, helping us say, okay, you, you stumbled just a little bit. That's okay. We're going to move forward again. Right? Amen. Amen. So... I'm going to wrap this, start wrapping this up here. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick example of what happened. Though. As we were going to the other church over there, we had, uh, I've been praying for the gift of tongues for years and years and years. Never could get it. I, I pray for it. You know, so Father, I'd just love to be able to speak in that language. I'd love to be able to have that heavenly language. Father, I just would love to have that, you know, and I would pray and I went to these little uh, uh, Bible studies and groups, you know, and they would say, okay, we're going to pray for the gift of tongues over you, you know, and they'd pray over you and they'd say, now open your mouth and let it come out. And it was like, I was just trying to force it out, you know, and it's like, that's not going to work. I don't know what I'm doing. So I waited. 
And I waited. And all of a sudden, one day, I was over at the other church, and we were in a small group, and, and Renee, Tommy and Renee were leading one, and I was in Renee's group, and she said, we're, we're going to pray over the gift of tongues. Who in here wants to give tongues? Like, me. And uh, she said, okay, here we go. So we started praying. And she started praying over me. And she said, no, open your mouth. She goes, and just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, Lord, I got it. Amen, amen. And it was just such an overwhelming, exciting thing for me. I was just jumping up and down. having. A, and Renee was laughing. And she was like trying to keep me from falling over and, and falling into people. And it was just so much fun. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But anyway, it, it's... It's when you walk with the Father and you, and you start asking, you start leaning and you start, you know, you start doing and, and walking in his path and doing what he's asking you to do. I think he just, just sticks in there and he just pops things at you, you know, right now and then. And it's like, wow, this, this is real stuff, folks. This is real stuff. You know, and in my journey, I've, I've, I've learned to listen to the Father. I've learned to hear what he's saying now. I'm learning to hear from him more all the time. And when I'm out doing power evangelism, when I'm out doing uh, outreaches, you know, I hear these words. And I used to hear them before somewhat. But I didn't know what they were. I didn't know how to do anything with it. But it's, it's starting to become t- more clear to me now. And his truth and his freedom is starting to reign in my life more and more all the time. And it's just such a blessing. You know, church, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start wrapping this up. I know I said that, but I'm getting a little long here. So, you know, church, the enemy wants us, he wants us to yoke up with uh, his lies. He wants us to yoke up with his, with his slavery, the yoke of slavery to come on us. Yeah, worship team can come on back up. Um, he wants us to, 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 to kick and, and say, yeah, it's good that I have an addiction. Yeah, I, I can overeat. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've got condemnation. That's okay, you know. Um, all that stuff he's, he wants you to yoke up with because he wants you to believe that's what your identity is in him. You know, folks, I'm here to tell you it's a lie. That's all a lie. And we don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept that. That's not who you are in Christ. It's not. God created us in his image. God created us and and, and he wants his identity in us. Representing him. In Galatians 5.1 it says, In this freedom Christ has made us free. And completely liberated us. Stand fast then and do not be hampered or held ensnared and submit again to the yoke of slavery. When you get away from it, you stay with Christ, you stay away from it. Because he set you free from it. You know, God gives us an amazing plan. He just, he, he's, he's given us um, a life. And he wants you to be happy. And he wants, you to, bl- he wants to bless us with that life with all of his blessings. But there's so much more in his, in his plan and purpose for us than just that. First and foremost, God wants a personal relationship with us. He wants us to partner with him in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants us to share it with people that do not know him. He cares about us. He loves us. And he wants us to go out and he wants us to show that love and our testimony gives healing to others. You know, these things that I've been talking about, if we hide those in our hearts and we don't deal with that stuff, you know what happens? They cause problems in our relationships. They cause problems in our lives. They cause our daily joy to be stolen from us. And it's hard to find freedom and truth in that. Psalms 26, 2 says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me from my heart and my mind. Prove me. Test me. You know, if this message is spoken to you today or anybody online right now, I'm going to say a quick prayer with you. And I just want you to just, if, if this is speaking to you and you've walked through this for, I just want to say a quick prayer with you. And I want to set you, I want to, to, to set in motion for the Lord to set you free. So please just repeat after me. You don't have to say it out loud. You can say it in your heart. You can say it in your mind. But just reach out to the Father because he's there waiting for you. So Lord Jesus, I pray that you examine me, prove me, test me. So that your spirit can lead me into all truth. Because I'm ready today to choose and remain free. In Jesus' name, amen. So 
we're going to continue in worship now. And one of the songs that they're going to play here is, is a song that, that just wrecked me and broke me and helped me walk through my, my pain and my suffering and all the, 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 the junk I was carrying. So let's worship, folks. Who am I that the highest king 